Hey folks, welcome back to the Holy Comforter Episcopal Church YouTube Bible study. It is great to have you back. Um, I took off last week. I was at Virginia Theological Seminary myself for a week of continuing education, um, but I'm, I'm back in the office, so it's great to be with you. This Sunday, we're going to be reading a, a famous, great passage from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Uh, so let's just let's just read it because it's awesome. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, "Let us go across to the other side." And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, "Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing?" He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they are filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Oh, fantastic. So uh, I, I got to show you, I, I did a little drawing this morning um, as I was thinking about this passage. Sometimes, not often, I um, sort of like to draw it out um, to see it visually. Um, what, what I think is so interesting, this um, when evening had come, uh, it, it just sort of strikes me as absurd that Jesus would want to cross to the other side of the lake when a potential windstorm was brewing and as it was getting dark. Um but that's, that's part of it, isn't it? Is that Jesus always has something in mind for us that we might think is totally absurd, but which is precisely uh, that he has in mind. And, and we should say something about uh, b before and after this passage. Uh, before this passage, he is teaching um, the crowds. He's, he's teaching them in parables on the lakeshore. And actually it says that the crowds were so great that he had to get into a boat um, to give him some space. So he used the boat as like a pulpit. Um, and then I, I have this sort of in my mind's eye, he's sort of done teaching, he's tired, and he turns around and he looks across the lake and he goes, let us go across to the other side. Now, uh, after this passage is when they come to the country of the Gerasenes uh, and he meets what we call the Gerasene demoniac, um, the man who is being um, tormented by the legion of demons, and he casts out the demons. Uh, we'll read about that that story later. But but it's almost like Jesus says, like I, he has in mind this man, the sick, tormented man, and he goes, "I, we need to go across to the other side so that we can save him." No, but this whole bit right about um, being caught in the storm. We've all been in these storms in life, um, <coughs> and, and of course we think. We can think that Jesus um, is asleep and doesn't care. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? We've all said something like that, right? Like, like, come on, God, like, did, where are you? What, what's going on? One of the things I, I think about this uh, as I was using my imagination and drawing my little um, my little tableau is, um, you know, what's in the stern of the boat where Jesus is sleeping? Well, it's the rudder. Jesus is, um, it's not like he's asleep. Well, he is asleep, but but it's not like he's given up control. It's that he is still there by the rudder, which I think is a really um, kind of a cool cool little image there. Um, another interesting thing in this uh, that you'll notice is that everybody is just asking each other questions. Okay, so, so we go through this, right? Um... The, the disciples ask him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus says to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And then they say, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? <laughs> they're all sort of like asking questions and there are no answers, which is very uh, indicative uh, of the Gospel of Mark. This, this is one of Mark's themes, is that Mark will raise these questions for us but will not provide us with the answers. Mark's rhetorical tool is to ask questions and then we have to put the answers together in our own heads and in our own hearts so that we fully grasp it for ourselves. If you um, flash forward to the end of the Gospel of Mark, to the resurrection scene, um, it ends with uh, the women going to the empty tomb. Jesus' body is not there. They meet an angel 
um, who says, like, he's not here, and it says the women leave and they're afraid. Like, that's it. And, and, and so the idea is that, that we are the ones who then have to stitch together uh, what it what that means for us and, and what that means, which I think is a really sort of clever way that Mark um, engages with us and, and, and that we read all of these questions and then so we ask, like, why does Jesus care that we're perishing? And we have to say, well, well yeah, he actually does care, right? Um, or um, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? So we have to ask ourselves, like, why am I afraid? Why don't I have faith? And notice, too, that the opposite of faith is not doubt, right? Faith and doubt are not opposites. I cannot emphasize this enough. Faith and doubt are not opposites. Faith and fear are opposites. And I think that's another really clever thing that Mark is doing for us, to think faith and fear are opposites. So um, I encourage you to think about your own life. Where, where are the places that you're afraid? Maybe it's time to invite Jesus into that place, um, to sort of shake Jesus, even when it seems that he is sleeping, um, and to, to, um, to remember that, that faith is this gift that is given to us. Uh, it is a gift that banishes fear, because we believe that the Lord Jesus is always going to be the captain of our boats, steering us through this storm and through the next storm as well. So, hey, thanks y'all for joining me. Um, it is uh, great to be back with you. Would love to hear from you. Um, by all means, send um, emails, comments, carrier pigeons, whatever it is. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.